Hello, everyone. Hi there. Welcome back to Book Club on Telescola. We are your hosts. I'm Mr. Daryl. And I am Miss Maka. Today we're going to talk about a uh, famous short story, Evelyn. By famous Irish writer James Joyce. Uh, as we know, it focuses on the story of a 19-year-old woman who can't leave the poverty that she has in Ireland behind her. Mm -hmm. And she really wants to seek her happiness with her lover, Frank, and to go together to Buenos Aires. Mm -hmm. Oh, very exotic, Bo mm -hmm. Buenos Aires. It is. Uh, let's find out if she makes it there or not. Yes, but before we actually move on to our discussion part, let's look at our agenda. So firstly, we'll talk about the new vocabulary. Um, afterwards, we're going to introduce you to the writer, James Joyce. And later, we'll talk about the summary of this short story. Hmm. As you know, every summary needs its characters to move forward. We'll speak at, about the main character, Eveline herself, and uh, Frank. From there, we'll look at the setting, the when, the where of the story, and finish off with a look at the main themes of the story. Mm -hmm. And finally, of course, we are always ready to give you an interesting homework. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to the answers that we'll get for this homework. Yes. Uh, now let's look at the vocabulary. Um, we have eight words that we are going to focus on, that you should focus on as well, to understand our discussion better and the story itself. You'll find these words in the actual version. Now our first word is to suffer, a verb, it's to suffer. Mm -hmm. This is when you undergo or feel pain, distress, that kind of thing. Danjua. Our next word is failure. Um, it's a noun, failure, failure. An act or instance of uh, failing to or proving unsuccessful, uh, lack of success. Mm -hmm. And our next word is abusive. Abusive, it's an adjective. Um, is when you use harsh language to express yourself, uh, insulting language, or when you uh, hurt someone by your behavior. Sastiki, arahumanuri. All right, the next word is reliance. It's a noun, reliance. When you're confident or trustful, uh, and you have that kind of uh, dependence on someone. Raimeze damogi de buleba. Our next adjective is placidly. Placidly, in a, doing something in a calm or peaceful manner, uh, something Tranquil. Our next verb is to fulfill. To fulfill. This is when you carry out or bring to realization or to completion uh, something. And it might have been a promise or it might have been some kind of prophecy. Mm -hmm. And the last word is motionless, uh, an adjective motionless. This is when there's no movement or motion whatsoever. Well, Ms. Maka, I think mm -hmm. we should move on to speaking about James Joyce himself. Yes. So, his <laughs> years of birth and death, 1882 to about 1941. So you can see he crosses the 19th century to the 20th century. Um, he was an Irish novelist, mm -hmm. uh, short story writer, poet, teacher, and literary critic. Interesting. And he continued um, to the modernist avant-garde um, like movement and is regarded as one of the most influential and important writers of 20th century. Mm -hmm. He's best known for his work Ulysses uh, from 1922, a uh, landmark work in which uh, he borrows like moments from Homer's, uh, mm -hmm. the, the ancient Greek writer Homer's um, tale, The Odyssey and he kind of transports that to the 20th century and um, he uses a particular style, a very kind of stream of consciousness style, very modern and very sort of uh, experimental style. Interesting. His other works also um, include some sto a short story collection like Dubliners um, was written, that was written in 1914 uh, and the novel A Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man, um, also uh, one of the most can be very different uh, short story, Finnegar's. Uh, no, Finnegan's Wake. Finnegan's uh, Wake, yeah. A novel of very, very difficult to read as well. Interesting. Could we also kind of recommend our listeners to read to, this? Uh, yeah. Well, it's, uh, it'd be very difficult, mm -hmm. I think. 
Okay. His other writing writings include uh, three books of poetry, of course a play, his published letters, and occasional journalism. Mm -hmm. In 1904, in his early 20s, uh, he immigrated away from Ireland to continental Europe, mm -hmm. and he spent most of his time in three cities, Trieste, uh, Paris, and Zurich. And he was kind of exiled away from Ireland because he didn't really agree with many things there. Mm. So, um, Aveline is one of the shortest stories uh, that make up James Joyce's collection, Dubliners, um, and uh, a, a volume that, uh, that didn't actually meet success, um, like initial success from the very beginning. It sold uh, like 379 copies, yeah. so it's quite few, right? Mm -hmm the neighbors and his mm -hmm, family members. Exactly. Uh, in its first year of publication, and 120 of those were bought by Joyce himself. Well, you gotta, you gotta promote yourself somehow. Uh, yeah, so it's like investing money <laughs> in, in your yourself. work. <laughs> yes. In yourself, yeah. Uh, although most of his adult life was spent abroad, uh, his fictional world, his books, focus on Dublin. Uh, Ireland and is populated largely by characters who resemble very closely his real life relatives, friends, and people that he knew. And there is one saying that uh, James Joyce said about his work. Um, we can quote it right now. For myself, I always write about Dublin because if I can get to the heart of Dublin, uh, I can get to the heart of the, all the cities of the world. Uh, in the particular, is contained the universal. Mm -hmm. That's a very good artistic um, principle, I guess. Mm -hmm. When you speak about yourself in a real way, everyone can relate, no matter yes. where they are. Yes. All right, then. We have a question for the audience, so I hope one of you can answer. Uh, it's based on what we spoke about in the author section. Do you think James Joyce best represents Ireland in the early 20th century? Uh, I think James Joyce does represent Ireland's struggles best because he shows how the Irish uh, at the time was caught in the middle of an important time. They had to change to meet the modern world like the rest of Europe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well said. Yeah, interesting. He's, he's the he's well considered to be the face of Irish, Ireland in the 20th century. Mm -hmm. And now let's look at the summary of this short story. Mm -hmm. So Aveline is a young woman uh, living in Dublin with her father. Uh, her mother is dead in the story. So dreaming of a better life beyond the shores of Dublin uh, and Evelyn plans to um, elope with Frank. And to run and away. Exactly, mm -hmm. uh, but secretly, uh, yeah, because um, her father actually forbade her uh, from meeting um, Frank mm -hmm. um, because those two men, they uh, fell out and uh, she dreams um, of living with him in Argentina. Mm -hmm. It's a common enough story. Mm -hmm. Now, with her mother gone, Evelyn is respons responsible for the day-to-day -day routine of the household, her and her father. Her father's often drunk mm -hmm. and only reluctantly uh, puts in his share of money to take care of the household. So can, if you can imagine, it's that kind of family. They're all kind of sharing the, whatever money they make in their little jobs. Oh. And he uh, reluctantly does this to his own uh, family. And her brother, Harry, is busy working away and uh, out on business quite often. So often, Evelyn is by herself. Yeah, uh, also, she works in a shop and sometimes on Saturday nights when she asks for some money uh, to her father, her father, n uh, like quite often, um, is very abusive, like mm -hmm. verbally, um, and we can say that he is also quite drunk for a, long, for a lot of times. Mm -hmm. When he eventually hands over his housekeeping money, mm -hmm. Evelyn has to go to uh, the shops and buy food for Sunday dinner at the last minute. Mm -hmm. But as she is just about to board the ship, uh, Eveline suffers a failure of resolve and she cannot go through with it. Yeah, and that's very interesting why she does that. So, so she immediately, without any words, uh, she turns around and goes back home. So back. she cannot really leave her house. Yeah, back to that sort of abusive situation. Mm hmm yeah. So who knows what was in her mind in that, or maybe some people can relate themselves 
Okay, so now um, it is time for the summary question that goes to our audience. Um, do you think the story is tragic? Uh, it seems that the story is a tragic one. Evelyn doesn't have the courage to do what she desires to do, so this is a failure in my eyes. Mm -hmm. I think many people might see it like that. Yes, and agreed, of course, when you w really wish something that strongly, you have to follow your heart. You have to have the, the bravery, the courage to mm -hmm. go into something unknown. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Well, let's move on to the characters now. Mm -hmm. uh, we have not many because it is a very, very short story. So we've only got uh, two characters to talk about. Mm -hmm. The first one is, of course, um, Evelyn, the protagonist of the story, the main personality in the story. She makes a bold and exciting decision initially to elope, to run away with um, Frank to Argentina, but ultimately backs away from it and excludes herself from love. Yes, and her this constant review of pros and cons of her decision um, like demonstrates her willingness to please everyone but herself uh, and her final resolve to stay uh, in um, Dublin with her family and in uh, like with the she it shows that she is quite trapped in this domestic atmosphere that she had in Dublin mm -hmm. again a very common story mm -hmm. probably at that time and our time as well yeah and I would add that she's quite afraid to uh, embrace the unpredictable so maybe she is uh, kind of, uh, how to say, afraid of new world, mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. like Literally, that. Literally, Argentina being a new world to, mm -hmm. to her. Yeah. Uh, let's move on to this, um, the second character, Frank. Um, now, Frank was a good man, actually. He was, a, he was kind, uh, open-hearted, uh, brave as well. Mm -hmm. And Evelyn really falls in love with him too much but maybe not that much. <laughs> <laughs> not enough to escape mm -hmm. from her yeah. situation. Exactly. Well, uh, let's have an, a character question to the audience. Um, what was it about Frank that made Eveline fall in love with him? Evelyn saw a possible future with Frank because he seemed to be darling enough to want uh, uh, Eveline behind. Uh, he represented the best quality of an Irish young man at the same time. Yeah, interesting. Interesting. Like she found it, maybe found him as a chance to escape her life. Mm, and he seemed to be the best of uh, maybe Ireland at that time in that generation. Mm -hmm. But nonetheless, she still can't escape. And maybe there's a comment that he's make James Joyce is making about this. What well, kind? We'll find out <laughs> in, in the main themes. Okay. Now let's move on to the setting part, and traditionally we start with the when part of the story. It happens in 90s, um, 1910s of Ireland. Um, the stories comprise a naturalistic uh, depiction of uh, Irish middle class life um, in and around Dublin um, in those years, mm -hmm. mentioned years. The stories were written when Irish nationalism was at a peak. This is a very big part, background part. Uh, the Irish were, were feeling uh, repressed by the English, and mm -hmm. they were feeling very nationalistic, and they wanted independence and those kinds of things. And there was a search for national identity. Who is it to be? Who who is it to be Irish, for example? And uh, so they were a country that was at crossroads. They were going half the country was looking this way, half the country was looking that way, mm -hmm. and there was a lot of social conflict. Interesting. And uh, what about the where part? As we've already mentioned, the story happens in Dublin. So Eveline, in many ways, is just another Dubliner. But um, talking about her story, uh, actually, this suggests something about the hardships and limitations connected to women um, in early 20th century in Dublin in general, mm -hmm. in general. As you know, this is just one short story in that book, Dubliners, which is a collection of short stories. And she, there are other female characters in that book, Dubliners, that explore the different harsh conditions of life in Dublin. But Evelyn, in facing and rejecting a life-altering decision, mm -hmm. maybe is the most tragic of them all. Yeah, and uh, mm, before talking about the main themes, even here we can mention maybe James jo Joyce uh, believed, not maybe, but James Joyce believed that Ireland, uh, which often had a habit of uh, nostalgic um, looking backward mm -hmm. on, and they 
kind of were stuck uh, onto the um, past, mm -hmm. yeah, past life. Yeah. Um, yeah. They, this country and um, Dublin, in this case, needed to progress and strive to bring itself up to date. Mm. Do you think there's some kind of parallel between what they were facing and maybe what? Georgians and Polisians are facing? Um, yes, why not? Like, I think that uh, generally every country and every city needs to uh, think about how to always keep themselves up to date. Mm, very good. Now we have a question. Yeah, exactly. Setting question. And it goes like this. Now, do you think James Joyce was making any political points? Uh, I think James Joyce was trying to protest several backward traditions and social problems that he saw in his era. He was very progressive in his era. Mm -hmm. That's true. He was very progressive uh, in his era. Mm -hmm. And maybe, mm, yes, I agree, of course, about the social issues, but maybe those social issues were somehow connected to political situation for that time. Yeah, fair enough. Um, mm -hmm. I, I guess everything is political yeah. in, in, in a sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's move on to the main themes, Ms. Maka. Yes. Are you ready? Oh, very ready. We have several themes, and the first theme is the fear of the unknown, mm -hmm. as we've spoken about quite of, of, often already. So, torn between two extreme options, uh, unhappy domesticity at home, or a dramatic escape mm -hmm. to Argentina for marriage, Eveline has no possibility of a moderately content life. Yes, but uh, her dilemma does not really illustrate her indecisiveness, but maybe it is the lack of options that she has in her life. Mm. Um, on the docks, when she must make a like, life-changing decision, uh, a turning point for herself, she remembers the promise that she gave to her mother to keep the family together. Mm. So, but who was the family like? Yeah, she lived with her time, yeah, yeah. father. So, so close to escape when she was on the docks where the ship was, uh, Eveline re revises her view of life at home, remembering the small kindnesses, mm, her father's caring for her when she was sick, for example, and a family picnic before her mother died. So she remembers those small nostalgic things mm -hmm. uh, and then stays behind. Yeah, and um, these memories overshadow the reality of uh, her abusive father and also very tiring and boring job she has. Uh, and her sudden certainty comes as an uh, epiphany mm -hmm. and uh, she must remain uh, with what is familiar. Yeah, so she refuses the new. Mm. Mm -hmm. When faced with a clear choice between happiness and unhappiness, Evelyn chooses unhappiness, which frightens her less than the her intense emotions for Frank or this chance at new life in Argentina. Yeah, and Evelyn's nagging, uh, nagging sense of family, uh, s like duty, stems uh, from her fear of love um, and an unknown life in uh, life abroad, uh, and her decision to stay in Dublin uh, renders her as just another figure um, in the crowd of Dubliners watching lovers and friends depart the city. I, I a little bit relate myself to this um, character, to be honest, so because I have also refused uh, many things that were new. So, yeah. So there's a little bit of Evelyn in, in you. Yes, exactly. Hmm. Uh, let's look at the second theme, the second major theme. Uh, this is the need for change, the, maybe the need to realize that you have mm -hmm. to change your life. Uh, in many ways, Evelyn typifies the difficulties faced by many Dubliners at the time. Mm -hmm. And James Joyce actually represents, uh, like depicts um, uh, her current existence as dull, um, like something uninspiring, even oppressive, mm. uh, with her abusive father, highlighting the idea that the older generation needs to be uh, cut off if young Ireland is to forge itself into a new nation. So it's something very um, direct and very harsh. Like he thinks that it should be totally cut off if they are against. Mm -hmm. And despite, even the, there are good aspects in old, uh, old Ireland, of course, mm -hmm. uh, such as Eveline's mother and her uh, brother, but both are dead and gone. So that's uh, kind of symbolism there. Mm -hmm. The good things are dead and gone. The promise of a new start in a new country, and remember Buenos Aires uh, translates into English as um, 
fresh air, good air. Mm. So like that chance of fresh, uh, fresh start is, is there in symbolism. It seems like the best uh, way to shake off the musty old air of Ireland. Hmm, interesting. And yet we've talked um, about so many pros of changing, right? But still, Eveline um, makes up her decision to stay uh, in her past and stick to Ireland. Well, let's look at what it is she's hanging on to. Mm -hmm. Our next theme is nostalgia for this old world, old Ireland. Mm -hmm. um, and this brings us to the one of the most difficult aspects of Joyce's story to analyze and to uh, understand. Yeah, and maybe that's uh, that's nostalgia for old iron that is connected to her childhood memories that actually prevents her from immigrating with Frank to Argentina, perhaps. People can be so stuck to their childhood memories mm -hmm. that they can't leave a place. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the genius of the story is how Joyce doesn't tell us precisely what makes Eveline stay in Dublin at the end of the story. He leaves it kind of vague. Mm -hmm. There are lots of questions we may ask to this character. Is it nostalgia? Is it sense of duty to her father and brother to keep the family together that makes her stay um, and turn back to Ireland? Or is it some kind of nostalgic attachment to this um, country uh, and the happy memories that it carries from her childhood? Um, even through most of the people who shared those memories with her have either immigrated back to England uh, or, or like have de died. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have one last small uh, theme, paralysis. Mm -hmm. Paralysis being frozen in a, a place and you can't move. Uh, one of the key th uh, words in Joyce's Dubliners, the whole book itself, not just the story, is the word paralysis. Mm. and people feel immobilized, they can't move, uh, unable to move or progress, trapped in their own lives. Oh, and uh, Joyce believed is, um, what, what Joyce believed is what Dublin, and indeed much of Ireland, uh, was like as a whole paralyzed. Mm. Uh, Eveline offers a small little picture of how deeply such paralysis can run uh, even leading a young woman to forego a chance of happiness, a new start somewhere else. Yeah, and despite the fact that this is quite a short story, we can say that there are lots of main themes that uh, the writer wanted to tell us with this short one. Mm -hmm. We picked out four, four main themes from mm -hmm. possibly and one there are of more. the shortest. Yeah, the mm -hmm. more. Here's a question for the audience. Um, do you think that there was anything good in old Ireland that James Joyce might have liked? In my opinion, I don't think that Joyce really liked uh, the old Ireland. He even left um, the Ireland um, in, in order to make protests um, of um, mistakes that Ireland was making. Yeah, so he was a contemporary thinker. Progressive kind of thinker, mm -hmm. a r bit of a radical as well. Mm -hmm. Let's move yeah. on now to maybe summarize everything. Yes, and it is high time. Of course, we started um, with um, the author part, mm -hmm. uh, James Joyce. And the summary of the story, it's a story of a 19-year-old girl, still a teen, a late mm -hmm. teen, and she has a choice, difficult choice. Does she leave or does she stay with her situation? Mm -hmm. Then we had uh, two characters in our story. This was Aveline and her boyfriend, Frank. Mm -hmm. We have the setting, it's the early 19, uh, 1900s uh, and in Ireland. Mm -hmm. And the main themes that we have chosen for you were fear of the unknown, the need for change, a nostalgia for old Ireland, and um, paralysis. Yes, very good. Let's just review the words from the very beginning once more, one last mm -hmm. time. We had to suffer, failure, nostalgic, abusive, reliance, uh, placidly, to fulfill, and motionless. Interesting. Thank you very much. Uh, you're very welcome. And now we have a question. A homework mm -hmm. question. And here is the question that we'd like to ask the audience. Now, we can see in this story how tragedy can happen to people in ordinary ways, not just in the great Shakespearean ways and so on. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about all the other ways that tragedy can ha happen to ordinary people? We spoke about this one situation in, in the story. Finish your discussion by ask, uh, speaking about how we can overcome it or fight against it. 
ნაწარმოებში დავინახეთ როგორ ატყდება ხალხს თავს ტრაგედია არა შექსპირისეული გზით არამედ ჩვეულებრივ ვითარებაში დაწერეთ ყველა შესაძლო გზა თუ როგორ შეიძლება შეემთხვეს ტრაგედია რიგით ადამიანს როგორ შეიძლება გადავლახოთ ან ვიბრძოლოთ მის წინააღმდეგ and they can send those answers to the address you see on the screen right now დავალებები შეგიძლიათ გამოაგზავნოთ ეკრანზე მითითებულ მისამართზე. Well, Ms. Maka, I'm, I'm looking forward to the answers we might get to that question. Oh, that's very interesting. I might learn some things from those uh, assignments. So make sure you have good advice for us. You'll find out if there's a lot of tragedy in <laughs> Yeah, but they have to um, come up with some kind of ways how to solve yeah, it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, I think uh, we can wrap it up now. We should thank the audience as well. Mm-hmm. Thank you to our TV audience. And thank you for uh, the discussion as always. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course, for you too. And I guess that's all. Goodbye. Uh, until next time, goodbye.